Hey friends, Mandy here at Bare Bones Living and welcome to the beginning of my food forest. I am so excited to bring this to you guys. Um, this is something that I have thought about, dreamt about, wanted dearly and it's finally started, it's initiated, it's a lot of work, it still needs a lot of work, but no time like the present and I wanted to just give you guys a quick peek at what we have started, what our thoughts are, and what we got. All right, so I don't know that I will show you each and every plant or tree that I have in here, but I call this my food forest because I have both trees and shrubs planted in here currently. And I was going for the kind of permaculture, orchard-esque thing, or thinking, and that is, you know, gardening on different levels. So I have the trees that'll grow high, and basically what we have here is four trees. Each row has four trees in it. So in, in each row, and I'm, I'm counting rows going this way, um, so you can see this row right here very clearly. But there's one, two, three, and then this one is four. Um, so of these rows, there are four going back this way as well. I don't know if you can see that. So there's one, there's another, there's another, and then the very far back is a smaller one. Um, <clears throat> I have a mix of nuts in the back row are my nuts because they are going to be the tallest and then I have more nuts in the second row and then starts my fruit in the third and fourth rows and then in between I have different shrubs. So here I can tell you that this is, well first let me also mention, I got these trees, the nut trees, all the nut trees except for one came from Tai Tai's nursery because I was having a really hard time finding nut trees. Um, and then I got bare, and those were bare root, the nut trees were bare root. And then I got another order of dwarf apples, pears, and a fig from Stark Brothers. And then you can see on some of my trees they have like these flapping tags. Those flapping tag trees were all from Tractor Supply. So I have multiple different, you know, carriers of trees. The ones that I got from Tractor Supply were not bare root. They, they kind of were because they were just like in like this mulchy stuff. I don't know because it fell right. I mean, you pulled it out basically. It wasn't like a potted tree. So I guess they kind of were bare root. I don't know. It's kind of. Not really sure. But three different carriers of fruits and nuts. So this here, this tree here, is a dwarf apple. I think this is my Golden Delicious Stark Golden Delicious Apple. Behind it is a Tractor Supply Honeycrisp. And then behind that is, so behind the flapping, uh, is that a Honeycrisp? Maybe that's a Fuji. Let's go take a look. Oh no, that says Fuji, I think. Oh no, it just says Apple. What does it say? Yes, that is a Fuji. All right, so then this is a Fuji Apple. But then behind it, you can see is another flapping tag that is the Honeycrisp from uh, Tractor Supply. And then behind that in the corner is 
a chestnut tree. Nope, nope, that's not a chestnut either. I lied, it's a pecan tree. <laughs> um, but I'll, So this is the back row, you're on the back corner here. So we have the pecan tree, and then if you follow it down the line here, there is two small chestnuts. Those were my smallest trees. There's one here. And then there's one. It's a, it, they're really small, but you can see the cardboard around them. And there's a really small little twig in that cardboard right there. That's a chestnut. And then that big tree back there in that corner is a walnut. And that one's going to be like 80 feet tall. <laughs> so this is my, that one's supposed to be like 80 feet. These chestnuts are supposed to be like 60 feet. And then this pecan tree is going to be somewhere along that, those lines as well. So then, then you can see our next row of trees here. This is our next row of trees. And that far one is another pecan tree. Um, that walnut is self-pollinating, so I only got one walnut. I got the two chestnuts because they needed to cross-pollinate. I got the two pecans because they needed to cross-pollinate. So the other pecan is over there. Then you can see that tree right there is has green on it. And that is an almond tree. Uh, that was the only one that had foliage on it when it came, and I think that one came from Tai Tai's. And then there's this almond here. That one came from Stark. And they both said that they were self-pollinating, but they would pollinate better if they had another to cross-pollinate with, so I just got two of those. And then at the end of that row is the tractor supply honey crisp. But then in between these two rows, so you have the the nut row up here, then the nut and you know, these are the almonds and pecan ending in the apple right there, but then in between here you can see that and that those are two elderberries. So they are planted in the middle of four trees, basically. So there's like one there, one there, and then one in this corner, and one, you know, right here. So they're in like the middle of a four of trees. Then there's another space. So that's one, two, and then in the middle of those back four, I have one more order for coming from Stark that has a cranberry bush in it and that's where the cranberry is going to go is in the back in between the chestnut walnut pecan and almond back there that's going to be a cranberry so then coming down to this row over here you know that's the pecan almond over here So back there at the far tree with the flapping tag, that is a peach tree from Tractor Supply. Then up from that is a plum tree from Tractor Supply. And then another peach tree here from Tractor Supply ending in the Fuji apple from Tractor Supply. And then in the mid down the middle of this one, we have two blackberries. There's one there and one there. And then out there by that white thing is a cherry bush that I bought from Tractor Supply. Um, and that, that white thing is a pillowcase because 
I was covering the more tender leaves. Only a few of my trees have buds on them. Uh, that, that peach tree out there has buds on it, so I was covering that one. This cherry, cherry bush I covered, and then the almond that's right there with the leaves I also covered. So, two blackberries and a cherry bush. And I don't know if you can see, but my mic is back in there clearing woods. I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> so that we can actually walk in there. So yeah, out there is a dwarf pear. And then another dwarf pear. And then here is the dwarf honeycrisp from Stark Brothers. And the Golden Delicious Dwarf from Stark Brothers. And then in between these three things, there, there, and I'm not sure if you can see that last one. It's right along here. But these two that I know you can see right here and here are seedless grapes that I bought from Tractor Supply. And then that far one that I'm not sure you can see is a seedless Concord grape that I got from, um, I think Tai Tai's. Yeah, from Tai Tai's. <laughs> and now you can't see Mike. There he is. He has emerged. <laughs> So I have, this is grapes in between here. And then, I don't know if you can see over in that corner, far corner over there is a fig. A Chicago hardy fig. And it said that it could grow up to like 15 feet, but I'm hoping I can trim it because, and like keep it shorter. Um, I tried to, I don't know if you can tell, but so you can obviously see that we're on an incline here. So I went with tallest in the back, down this way to now the dwarf trees. Um, and then I realized that that fig said it could go, I've never grown a fig before. I didn't think they could grow that big, but it's in that corner. So that if it does grow that big, it's not going to shade out that much. And then in between these dwarf trees are all blueberries. So there's, in between the pears are blueberries that I got from Tractor Supply. In between that pear and this uh, Honeycrisp is there's only one blueberry plant in there that I got from Stark. And then these two blueberries uh, here and there. There's so much glare. These two blueberries in between these two apples are from Stark. And then in front of those in the next row are two raspberries in between the dwarf row and the fig row. The fig is the only tree in that in that row. I left the rest of the front of this open for future plantings of things, but the in between the dwarfs and the fig row are two raspberries. A golden raspberry I think is on the far side and then the purple raspberry is in the front dead center. As for how I planted these, um, I planted all of my trees in native soil. I did not add any amendments to it at all. 
Um, I f took the dirt off, took the grass off, put it over to the side, took the dirt out, put the tree back in, filled it back in with native soil. Then put down the cardboard to try to help with um, weed prevention and things like that and then covered it over with a little bit more native soil to keep the cardboard down. And that's what I did on all of my trees. Um, I still need to come back and mulch. I still need to come back and fertilize. I want to put organic matter on top of this to give them some added nutrients. Um, I also want to come back and I, my plan is to, on the back side, so these are all on an incline, right? And so this, this hill kind of actually comes this way uh, so maybe, maybe up on this side for this tree, I want to create like a wallow or like a little bit of an indent in front of this tree so that when the natural rainfall comes, it'll fill up that reservoir that I've created with water and it will slowly then water this. So this is going to fill up with water just from the rain and then after it rains, whatever pools in that reservoir that I have created, that will just continue to water it l longer, I suppose. I'm hoping that that helps, but planting this whole thing took us an entire weekend. We were exhausted and it has been absolutely freezing ever since. So, like I said, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done here, but you know, when you get bare root trees, you just gotta, you gotta plant them. Currently our fence is just being held up. So we, we used this, what is this? One inch chicken wire, two inch, two. So currently we're using two inch chicken wire. I don't know if you guys can see this. So this is two inch chicken wire. Fencing is super duper expensive. So we went with two inch chicken wire. Um, and then it is five feet tall, I believe. Is that right? Five feet tall? Yeah. Uh huh. Five feet tall. Uh, it doesn't look like it right now because it's all like bowed down. I'm not that tall, you guys. Um, <laughs> but it's five feet tall when it's all stretched out. And we currently are holding it up with uh, T-posts. Um, and we went out and bought these super heavy-duty T-posts. It We did only have... Can you guys see the, the dinky little one in between these wood ones? <laughs> like, this f fence looked really pathetic a couple hours ago until Mike put these big guys in. Um, but speaking of those wooden ones, we are hoping to do more of these. And this beautiful post here is just a tree that had fallen in our woods and Mike found it and it's perfect because it doesn't have any bark on it and Mike cut it up into two pieces so one is obviously here and the other one is in that corner and they're very sturdy and they look very natural and I'm very happy with them and so we're hoping that we can get more of these and I like the look of it. It looks more natural. And this is what we're hoping to get more of. And then we don't have to use these T-posts. But at least, yet, you know, they say you need eight feet to keep deer out. I think five feet is enough that the deer, I mean, if they really want to get in, of course they can get in. But I think they would probably immediately regret it. And it's, they would have to really want to get in 
to want to jump this. It's not foolproof, but it's something. And this is what we're hoping to go for more. So that's just kind of, you know, I wanted to get this started. They mailed these to us when they did. And when we planted them, it was like 60 degrees, which was phenomenal. We had two beautiful days in which we could plant these. And then it rained a ton, which was great for the, the trees. Um, and then the temperatures dropped again. Um, so like I said, I covered the ones that had buds on them, the rest of them, it kind of is what it is. Um, but they are started. I ha still have a lot of work that I want to do on them. And I'm not done planting. Like I said, I have another Stark order coming. Um, and that one has, like I said, the cranberry bush and asparagus. So I have two levels, you know, the trees, the highest level. Then I have the mid level with all these shrubs. And then I need still the ground cover. So asparagus, strawberries, chives, like I still have to plant those kinds of a th things, but we still have a lot of grass in here. Um, I still need to shore up all of these trees and put mulch around them. And then I'll continue to add things to this, adjust things. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I will find that I want, things that I don't like, things that I do like, but it is started. We did get it fenced off, which I was really excited to do. This is not our permanent fencing, but like I mentioned, we have a lot of deer we also have a lot of rabbits and things like that that would love to gnaw on tender little trees. So this is just the beginnings. If you guys have any suggestions, don't hesitate to drop them down in the comments. Um, I've never grown an orchard. I did keep all the trees. 20 feet apart, I believe, or 20-ish feet apart. I definitely needed the big trees 20 feet apart, and then I just kind of carried it over to all the others. The dwarf trees could be put a lot closer together, but um, then we put other things in between them and stuff like that. I could still plant another dwarf tree in between like the blueberries and stuff like that. I could add more, but I kept all of them about 20 feet apart um, and I'm hoping that all of these trees pull through this cold snap and just flourish um, and then I also want to show you what we're gonna do with this fencing but this was a huge huge accomplishment for us to get this orchard not this orchard, this food forest started and fenced. This is the perennials that I was talking about starting in my goals video. These obviously are not going to be feeding us. I mean, we might get a couple of berries or something like that, uh, which we will happily take. But this is one of those, this was an investment in our future. When, and I joked to Mike when we were doing this and we were exhausted, I'm like, 10 years from now, us is going to be so happy with us today. <laughs> and it was kind of funny and we both kind of chuckled, but that, that's the truth, you know, like in 10 years, this is going to be bountiful and beautiful. Today it looks like a bunch of sticks and it's not much, but it's because we started it when we did that 10 years from now us is going to be so happy. So I'm so excited that we got this started. I'm so excited to share it with you. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this out. Um, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Bourbon's Living. We'll catch you on the next one.